I think there's two directions from here. I think I'll just make a very quick chart of what the vowels, or what the sounds innately are. Um, This is the turning sound. You need at least four or five axes, but people have found a way to crunch it into a chart um, just by having a lot of little subboxes. And also, just by coincidence, the sounds show up in English. You don't really need to distinguish that much if you apply more than two dimensions. So, the main thing up here is going to be what part of your mouth is doing the important stuff. Um, so, a bilateral stop is when your lips stop sound from exiting. That's going to be either P or P. E. Um, the difference between those two is voicing. That's um, whether or not your vocal cords are producing sound at the time or if you're just exhaling. Um, really, uh, with P and B, it's, it's a little bit more subtle. Really easy example is S and Z are also a voice to unvoiced pair, and you can pick either sound of them. So, nothing is changing in your mouth. The only thing that's happening is your vocal cords are starting and stopping vibrating. If you want, you can just put your hand on the vocal. Um, so, uh, nasal sound, um, when using your lips, it's M. Uh, let's see if there are, yeah, there are other bilabial sounds, none of them occur in any language that I can speak, or I imagine that you can speak. You just have to fuck on Spanish sometimes, but I can't hear accents like that. Um, Labiodental. These guys are when you touch your lip, touch one lip to your teeth, and so interact with the two. Um, the only ones that you're likely to see in English for that are um, F and B. That's another uh, voice to unvoiced pair. where the International Phonetic Alphabet sort of runs out of symbols that you'll see in the letters. And so you get, um, for the, like what would be TH, or what is the more common way that TH is used is this guy. And then um, for the, you get an A, uh, which is, I think, used in old, old English at least. Um, so the, like theology, that's the, like, um, also, T and D, actually, that's one of those things I don't understand as well, but there are, I guess there are at least nine sounds between the two of them that you're likely to run into, but um, T and D are going to be somewhere around your teeth or your um, alveolar ridge, which is, you see the sort of lower part of your mouth, your hard palate is right behind. Um, so, P and D are floating around somewhere near there, um, as is N. N can also move around between the, your teeth and the back of the alveolar ridge, so no, no, no. Um, and if you're getting into real hardcore phonetics, it can be useful to make that distinction. It's not something that I think is made in very many languages. Um, Alveolar sounds are the things where your tongue is on that ridge right behind the root of your teeth. And um, most alveolar ones are the words at the very back of that. Um, so with the fricatives, which English has a hilarious number of, like no, like, no, very, very few languages have anywhere near the number of fricative sounds as English does. Um, so the, the, so, the. It's the German long S for what would be SH, and uh, Zhe, as in Azure, Azure is this thing that closely resembles a three. I'm not really sure where it comes from. Um, also, you see some affricates here. So those are um, the affricate because it's two parts. It's the frictiony sound and the stop. Um, they're written as two letters. Um, so the 
this chuck that you see it is a T and dot dot and um, chuck is a T and this guy. Um, right. Um, when we get retroflex sounds, there aren't any in English. Example from another language is um, you can use this, this syllable lock to talk uh, cur in Chinese. Um, that's when your tongue curls back slightly. Um, just as an aside, part of the reason that this strikes me is um, cur is one of the more common syllables in Mandarin. Um, also, was one of the most more common syllables in literary classical Chinese, as pronounced in like the Mandarin speaking area. Um, and because Chinese is an absolute homonyms, and classical Chinese mostly has one syllable words, um, I think there's something like 40 or 50 words in common usage that are pronounced chur. Um, this led a Chinese poet, I think in like the 1200s, 1300s, 1400s, to write an, um, an allegory using only the sound chur. Um, I only wrote in Chinese, I don't know all the characters, so I can't read it to you, but it's 100 words long, and all of those words are chur. And to read it on paper, it's a coherent, grammatically correct story. It's about the monk Shershur and his quest and failure to eat ten stuff lines. Palatal sounds. Uh, that's when you are doing something involving your tongue and the squishy part of your palate behind that ridge um, is the tongue back ridge. Our palate back past that ridge. Not really the flat, but the soft part. That's the bit that goes flat. Um, the sounding hug back there is J. Um, it's an approximant. They're somewhere around here. They've, I sort of simplified the things on this side. There are a lot of subcategories, but for ease of conveyance, it's J. It's J. Um, Velar. Um, velum is the very back part of your mouth. Um, it's right up around where the nasal flap is. Uh, nasal and flap. Um, we have plenty of sounds back there too. They involve the back of the tongue. The same one that can be crazy acrobatics. Um, stop is F. Paper, you only see two. Um, uh, ing uh, is really one, it's really just two sounds, i and ing. Um, there are, I'm forgetting the easy examples, but there are ways you can break up. Uh, you, can, you can know if examples of English words where ng appear separately, and it's very clearly just two distinct sounds as opposed to ing or um, yeah. So that is written as an n. And then way the hell back there, like four columns over, there are like lots of parts of your mouth back in your throat that are basically used in Semitic languages. You don't really see much else. Um, and then you get to bottle sounds, which are um, involve the closure that guy um, <coughs> in between, um, which would close off your. Uh, or close off your windpipe. Um, the only sound we, we have there is H, um, which is silent a lot, but when you say like top, that huh, um, is silent back there. And it is a very good thing. Um, we left out our paper quiz. There, um, R and L and L kind of move way the hell around here. Exactly what you're doing with the sides of your tongue kind of distinguishes which one you're doing in English. It's really weird shit. Um, okay, let me just put in a few like popular sounds from other languages that you might run into if you want to give up on the whole English wording sound thing. So naturally the IPA, which is the alphabet I've already used in, has I think it's up to something like 140 sounds. Um, also, 